MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Chronic wasting disease spreading to wildlife across Montana just ahead. See what researchers are saying about eating meat from an animal that does have that deadly disease. And Montana's minimum wage just went up. At 634, learn how our state stacks up against others. See what the increase might mean for workers. Happy Tuesday, Southwest Montana, 6.30. Chet Lehman, Matt Elwell with you here. It is a lovely morning out, mm -hmm. uh, but make no mistake about it, you're going to want your coat and your gloves. The steering wheel will be a little chilly It is a cold start to the day. Beautiful, though. Gorgeous, uh, yeah. Beautiful moonlight yeah. overnight tonight. Uh, the temperatures are cold this mm -hmm. morning. You look out uh, this morning, most areas sitting into the single digits, below zero in Butte and Wise River. It says five below in Wise River. My, mm. my instinct says it's much colder uh, in Wise River, just because that's Wise Maybe River. Uh, yeah, five degrees. <laughs> five <laughs> degrees in West Yellowstone as we're starting the morning. Uh, mainly clear skies for today. We do see some clouds in southern parts of Gallatin, Madison, Beaverhead County. I don't know. Uh, apparently, we're skipping the Bozeman uh, and Butte. Apparently, I'm pushing all the buttons. I'm watching you do that. Yeah. Okay, it's still Monday, right? Temperatures into the 20s for us for the afternoon. Does look like we're going to see some sunshine. <laughs> No, it is it is Tuesday. We'll we'll work it out. Monday we'll talk more about your, yeah. We'll talk about your forecast in just a little bit. So far, we've only had Monday this year, over and over again. Six thirty-two now. In twenty seventeen, there were just eleven reported cases of chronic wasting disease in Montana. That number increased to two hundred seventy-one in twenty twenty. So far, the disease has been contained to deer and wild game, but is there a risk to humans? MTN's Asher Lyons spoke to a Great Falls Research Institute to find out. Montanans have been keeping a watchful eye on chronic wasting disease since it was first discovered in the state in 2017. Research is being done at the McLaughlin Research Institute in Great Falls to determine whether or not humans can contract the disease. The disease is not known to infect humans, but now that it has been discovered near Great Falls and with how many families use wild game meat, they feel that it is important and worthy research. Currently, there is no live animal testing methods for chronic wasting disease that can be practical and used in the field. Many Montanans feed their family with wild game and this is a concerning issue as the disease is very contagious among deer and elk. We need to have the answers to know if humans could potentially get sick from this. Grindeland has more than a decade of experience as a veterinarian and submitted a proposal last year to Fish, Wildlife and Parks to receive samples for more testing. Institute officials said as far as they know, they are the only ones in the state conducting this type of research. FWP was unavailable for comment, but they are both working to learn more about it and develop further research on the disease. We're developing a collaboration with Fish, Wildlife and Parks to acquire samples to study with their CWD surveillance program and we're going to be developing live testing methods and investigate further into if humans could potentially get chronic wasting disease if they ate contaminated meat. In Great Falls, Asher Lined, MTN News. Closer to home this morning, Bozeman School Superintendent Casey Bertram says there will be no elementary school closing. That's in spite of the school district facing a $4.1 million shortfall. Last month, the budget committee made a series of recommendations, which included closing an elementary school to save some $300,000. Yesterday, Bertram released his recommendations. He says he does not want to close a school because it would have, quote, significant impacts not only on the identified school community, but also on the entire K-5 community impacted by associated boundary adjustments. Bertram recommending that the district sell two small pieces of land near Chief Joseph Middle School instead. Bertram also recommending eliminating the Fine Arts Director position and other staff positions. Bertram also supports closing the Bozeman Charter School. Bertram will make his recommendations during the January 9th school board meeting. Well, for Montana employees heading into 2023, the state's minimum wage is going up. But with very few businesses still paying minimum wage, MTN's Alina Howder dives into the impact it will actually have. 27 states, including Montana, raised their minimum wage this Monday, but most businesses, including Mitchell Golf here in Billings, have always paid their employees more than minimum wage, which makes us wonder what kind of impact this will actually have. 
If anyone knows anything about staff retention, it's Bill Mitchell, owner of Mitchell Golf. The people I have mostly have been working here a long time, uh, some people up to 25 plus years. Mitchell says there's no secret formula to keeping employees, but believes it starts with paying more than minimum wage, which was just raised 75 cents to $9.95 an hour. And it appears Bill Mitchell isn't the only one who has that figured out. According to the Montana Department of Labor, only 4.2% of Montana's workforce was making the minimum wage in 2022. I believe 15 really should be the minimum wage. We found that people who make less than that you know, almost need a second job uh, to survive and especially with the inflation right now. Mark Hardin is the business developer for the staffing agency Express Employment Professionals in Billings. So a couple of the things you said you were looking for? None of the companies they work with offer minimum wage. We have a couple in the 14 range but for the majority our uh, our clients are 16 to 17. And that even includes fast food restaurants. Most are now offering higher wages to try and combat the nationwide worker shortage. Hardin knows firsthand that it works. He says companies offering lower wages have a harder time finding employees. If the wages came up, I think a lot of places would be a little bit more successful in finding the right applicants. That's something Bill Mitchell figured out long ago, but an approach especially true now as inflation takes its toll in both businesses Interesting because inflation, a lot of our lower price entry items have gone up significantly in price. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. Now, as you just heard, Montana, one of 27 states that will see minimum wage increase this year. Of those states, Washington has the highest minimum wage, $15.74 an hour, while Montana has the lowest, currently $9.95 an hour, which is up from $9.20. Currently, the federal minimum wage for employees seven dollars 25 cents an hour well it's probably not fun to look at your energy bill this year the cost of natural gas expected to be roughly a third more today than it was a year ago if you live in an older home that price can be even higher without investing in what can be expensive upgrades most homes over 40 years old are in low-income communities according to freddie mack but there are efforts to make access to affordable energy fairer <laughs> If you think about the coldest you have ever been. I got home and found out it was minus 60 with the wind choke factor. You too might describe it like Randy Blankenship did. What's that feel like? It feels like you're dead. Is that bad? Yes. He's faced his fair share of Midwestern winters. And staying warm is hard to afford as someone who works for $15 an hour. I know with my electric bill, I was paying 300 during the winter. By the time I get done paying everything, I got maybe 80 bucks to my name. A month, that's it? That's it. But this winter, even with energy costs nationwide soaring, his bill is less. Right now I have it set at 72 degrees in here. Feels nice. It does. Since October, Randy's low-income apartment building has been heated by energy-efficient pumps and solar panels. Right now, I'd say about 150 is what it's saving me in electric. Some people, ah, oh, $150, that's another meal, you know, well, but, but it means a lot when you're, when you're that low income. Tom Main works for the nonprofit Cooley Cap, which owns this building. The group is working with the state of Wisconsin to see if weatherizing low-income homes with more efficient technology can lead to long-term savings, information that could be useful nationwide. How are the heat pumps working? <laughs> <laughs> Cooley Cap CEO Hetty Brown expects it to save the state's energy assistance program $34,000 over a decade. This is a smarter way to use our tax dollars. This is a smarter way to um, ensure that people can be living in a sustainable manner. While warmth on our coldest days and cool air on our hottest are essential, access to the right temperature isn't always equal. There's certainly energy assistance programs, but the long-term solution is really to provide um, different options for them and, and increase their efficiencies inside their home so that their money can go even farther. I drove to Milwaukee to meet with Linnea Katz Pettit. Allison is our operations manager. Absolutely. My second um, in command. Her nonprofit weatherizes people's homes for free. The city has more than double the national average of homes built before 1940. Many of her clients are older homeowners who can't afford the upgrades needed to efficiently heat their homes. 
can see homelessness. You can see um, someone who is standing in line for a food bank or um, trying to you know, get some assistance for their family. What I think most of our homeowners are dealing with is very private and behind a lot of doors. More than $3 billion of the bipartisan infrastructure law is going to weatherizing homes nationwide. For people that work their tail ends off and can't get ahead because how high the electric bills are. Those in charge of the pilot program Randy is part of hope people like him will save $1,000 a year on energy, money to help make ends meet in the tough times of today and potentially give him an exit from the annual cycle of not knowing if a safe temperature at home is something he can afford.